In this video, I'm going to show you how to understand and apply deployment strategies to your website or web app. So recently, what I did was I created this blog, which was to understand deployment strategies with the pros, cons and implementation. So you can find this on my website under imrancos.com and then click on articles. I've got a few more articles in there if you didn't know already. And also I have it on Medium as well. So it's at Imran Codes on Medium. So go ahead and follow me on them. But essentially what it was, was to give a better understanding of deployment process and how we would deploy our code and get it ready for the web so so if i scroll down into my article you can see here i've got an introduction and we'll be going through the five deployment strategies that i have which is the recreate deployment strategy which is updating the deployments rolling update deployment we also have the blue green deployment strategy the canary deployment strategy and also the a b testing deployment strategy over here so i'm going to go through each one we're going to work with my Microsoft Azure CLI, which is a public cloud environment that we can use. And then on a free account, which we will create as well, we will use some code that we have in a previous repository that I've worked with to deploy our code using the five strategies that we have over here. So, so let's get started with the video. Right, so if we scroll down and we go to our introduction, I've got a quick definition here of what deploying software does. So essentially it's a critical phase in the software development lifecycle. The chosen deployment strategy can impact the stability performance and user experience of the application so whatever you do you need to choose the right deployment strategy for your user or your client or whatever it is so that they are not affected by it so that's important to know this blog or video is to explore various deployment strategies discussing their advantages disadvantages and also how to implement them i'll specifically go into that later on so essentially the first deployment strategy is the recreate deployment strategy so essentially it's the recreate strategy involves shutting down the old version of the application and then starting a new version this approach is straightforward and easy to understand so essentially we've got an, a version of our application that's live on the web and we're going to do a new deployment the new deployment will have all our new implementations in the new features and so on and what we will do is we'll shut the older version down which is the one that's live and then we're going to add in our new version with all our updates and so on so that's essentially what that is pros for this are that it's simple is easy to implement and understand because they are two separate entities the is resource efficient as well so there's no need to run multiple versions simultaneously conserving resources so that's two of the pros there but they're probably more than that and some cons so this is when you think about making sure your site is highly available we want to make sure it's elastic and also scalable and these are some terms that are used in cloud and devops that essentially we want to think about the outcome for the customer and the impact on whatever application it is so it's specific to whatever industry you're working with or website you're working with so bear that in mind so cons are there's downtime so there's downtime while the new version is being deployed that is quite obvious with this strategy and it's also risky because if the new version fails then the entire application is down and then that could then lead to further downtime which then would impact your client base or your user so you need to also bear that in mind and and them cons alone are enough to make you think actually maybe we should do another deployment strategy so again if there is downtime and you want to go with this approach then maybe you need to do it at a certain time that most of your clients or users are not using the site so you could look at your analytics and maybe check when the traffic is very low or little and then therefore you could do your deployment strategy that way again most of the time in companies that i worked for previously if this was a strategy that they implemented then it was generally done late or to early hours of the morning and again that's just so we don't have as much downtime as possible so so this is the recreate deployment strategy what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this implementation, but you can implement it yourself, but we will do that later and I'll give you a detailed explanation of how to implement your deployment strategy. The second strategy for deployment is rolling updates. So this essentially is rolling updates incrementally replace instances of old version with instances of the new version. This ensures that the application remains available during the deployment. So just making small rolling changes whilst the application is available so small sections that are updating whilst the others are so that's quite a good approach if you want no downtime and you can see here the pros it's got zero downtime ensures that the application is always available and also 
is a gradual update so you can also monitor whilst the update is happening and you can also roll back when there are issues detected so so this is good if you've got like real-time logging that you can track and see what's going on if there's anything affected with your site and so on this is quite a good approach so and then if there is something wrong then you can always roll back as well so that's uh, another pro and then the con for this is it's complex because there's a bit more work that needs to be done for this again we'll look at that later and also it's an inconsistent state so users may experience inconsistent behavior if interacting with different versions during the update so so that is something else to bear in mind so also you will need to bear that in mind especially if the users using the local browser state or if there's something in local storage or uh, something that is saved or stored then also you need to bear in mind that the new fix if that is implemented we need to ensure that any caches or anything like that are also cleared so that is another con so essentially the user will have an inconsistent state and again there are pros and also cons to this strategy the third strategy is the blue green deployment strategy so the quick overview is blue green deployment involves running two identical production environments the current version blue is live so we've got one live and one ready to go live while the new version green is deployed and tested once verified the traffic is switched from blue to green so if you think about having a highly scalable and resilient application then you should have something like a load balancer and essentially what you could do with this strategy is to have the green deployed and tested on one load balancer and then the blue on the, on the other and then when it's ready to kind of be switched then all you do is change load balancers and then test that out make sure everything is seamless and so on so pros for this are there are there's zero downtime because essentially you're just switching traffic from one load balancer to another or one instance to another and again seamless with no downtime rollback is easy to revert to the previous version if needed so we could keep that instance of the blue open and make sure that there's no issues with the green deployment and that is quite handy as well so the other pro is that testing so a new version can be thoroughly tested before going live because we could direct certain amount of traffic to this ensuring that you know there's no issues with this and the third one is testing which is the new version can thoroughly be tested before going live so essentially you can test your application on a production environment and also whitelist certain ips so that the current traffic is going to the blue deployment and then when we are ready we can then divert to the green so that is another pro if you look at the cons you can see it's resource intensive which means that you require double the resource to maintain two environments because and in turn that would increase the cost if you're handling or managing two environments that will definitely be more overhead and you're also going to need to manage the time as well on both resources because again if we're testing on one we also need to make sure that the blue one is still working as well so the resource is intensive so you got to think about when it comes to costs and also time and there are other ones but and another con is the complexity because managing two environments and switching tap traffic can be complex so you need to make sure that you get the right people that can be able to do that so making sure you are switching routes and this can be done by making sure you're doing the correct dns switch which is the domain name server switch and and an example is here if you scroll just underneath you can see elastic beanstalk is good to manage this as well so so that is the blue green deployment strategy the fourth strategy is the canary deployment strategy so if we go into this one it says it says canary deployments involve releasing the new version to a small subset of users before rolling it out to the entire user base so let's think about say we're implementing a new feature and this feature is going to be implemented across the site so similar to the blue green where we want to test it out and so on but what we could do is we could test it out on say 10 percent of our user base or uh, maybe 20 percent and so on and again this helps identify issues early without affecting all the users so the stable release will always be there but again the canary deployment strategy can test a subset of our users and then make sure there's no issues or anything going on in this deployment so the pros for this are it risks mitigation so it limits exposure to new version issues because we've only contained it to the x percentage of users that we have defined and also it's a gradual rollout which means that it's easier to monitor and control the deployment process so these are things that are good in this strategy so cons again complexity because it requires additional setup for monitoring and traffic splitting which is of course 
a byproduct of this because what we are doing is we are making sure our application or web app is resilient and secure at all times and then also the cons is that it's delayed feedback so if you want to get full user feedback and not a subset of the feedback then that will take longer so you could kind of do a canary deployment strategy where you slowly increment the the percentage of users so you could do 10 percent if that's fine then 20 and 30 and so on so again this strategy is making sure that the live environment is somewhat contained and there's still that as a fallback so that is the fourth strategy and then you can see here this is how we would implement it but this is just a simple example we need we'll go into further detail on this later and then the fifth deployment strategy is the a b testing deployment strategy so so again it's quite similar to the canary so you can see the overview here it says a b testing is similar to canary deployment but focuses on testing different versions of the application so a and b simultaneously to compare performance and user experience so essentially you could do like a, if you had an e-commerce website and you had a shopping cart you could test whether users press a certain button on an item that they wanted to purchase if you wanted to for example add different text in there to see whether the text would have an impact on how many clicks you get on the item itself so you could do an a b test on that just to check whether a or b has the better impact in terms of driving sales so that is essentially what a b testing strategy is so pros for this are it's data driven so again we provide concrete data to compare different versions so again if you looked at the example i said where you have the certain example with the text and then certain example you could have with an icon which one performs better you then have click tracking enabled to see which one then leads to the sale so this is good to apply on the front end like i mentioned earlier and again you're getting you real user feedback so it's not it's not a guessing game if you're tracking correctly of course then you're getting the user feedback and this way you can make a better decision and then and then from that you know a or b which one's better let's roll it out to the live site for good so so these are the pros and then the cons is is complex again you need some sort of robust tracking and analysis tools there's quite a few out there that you could use but that's up to you i know that i have used firebase analytics quite a lot which is helpful if you're just yourself and you're trying to track something i would use that and most companies also use firebase analytics as well but again that's up to you what you want so if you just google an analysis tool for tracking a b testing and there's also softwares out there that you can also get as well so that is a con and then the other one is user confusion because users might get confused with different versions because if you forget to kind of switch it on or off the the version and if a user came in to your site yesterday they saw a certain button that was blue and then they come in today and then they see another button that is green green now for example then they might get a little confused with that and then if it constantly is changing then they'll be wondering what's going on so uh, again you could cause some user confusion and for this strategy feature flags in your code base are important so i'll do a video on that as well on how to add feature flags to your application and there's also other tools out there that can help with this enabling and disabling of feature flags so essentially a feature flag is if i want to add in this feature i want to hide it behind a certain flag in the application so that can be done on the global state of the application as well on the client side or on the server side so it's up to you how you implement that but i'll probably do a video on that in the future so finally there's one more that i've added in as an extra one which is the shadow deployment strategy so this one is where you shadow deployments route live traffic to the new version without affecting the response to the user this allows testing in a real world scenario without impacting the user so so essentially it's just moving the live traffic to another route basically so so the pros for this are that it has no impact and again live traffic testing without affected users and then also the other positive is that it's real world so you're testing on actual live users and not testing it in like uh another environment you're in the actual production environment uh, and it also identifies issues in real world conditions so these are valuable especially if you want to see what is going on in the live environment so that is a pro and then a con again resource intensive it duplicates processing and requires more resources which is of course highly costly on uh on a project so you need to bear that in mind 
and also it's complex so implementing this uh, routing and monitoring can be quite complex so again you need to think about the pros and cons when i'm adding the deployment in what is the pro for this and also what is the con for this how does it affect the business how does it affect the users how does it affect the time these are things that you also need to think about as well so these are the six deployment strategies that i've got in this blog you can read it but what i want to do now is quickly i've summarized it here as well and again if you want to see any more videos like this then just subscribe to this channel but now what we're going to be doing is if you're familiar with these and you want to implement them we want to do that with some sort of cloud provider because that is the shift and that is where everything is going into the public cloud and what we will do we will now get set up on microsoft azure and then try and deploy our applications using these six deployment strategies that we have here and we will do that next right so if you go to the microsoft azure website so it's azure.microsoft.com you see this page here with lots of information on what Azure is and what it actually does. And essentially it's a public cloud provider. So essentially it offers quite a lot of services such as cloud computing, which is essential nowadays. Or so most developers should have a basic understanding of all of these questions over here. If you don't, then again, I'll explain them further in this video and future videos as well. But if we scroll up to the top and you can see here, it says try Azure for free. So let's go and add go in here. And then what we want to do is we want to do start for free but if you can scroll down it says popular services free for 12 months so you can click here and view the services that you need so again you have virtual machines we have windows linux and so on we have databases which i will do a video on what databases are and the pros and cons for that as well we have storage so if you look at some videos that i've done with firebase on storing photos and video data and things like that and we also have other services in here which you can click here and then you can see all of the free services that you have available to you and you can also so practice them as well so let me just quickly close this down and i want to click start for free because i don't have an account so what you would do here is sign in with github because you should by now have a github account so this is where your code repository is and all i'm going to do is just authorize it so it's authorizing everything for us right so once you've completed your setup you should get a screen like this so the setup involves adding your credit card or your bank card details on there but essentially if you don't use the resources so if you do use it what we will be doing is using free tiers or the ones with the lowest costs anyway and then you can delete them so there won't be any cost to this but essentially you should get some free credits as well when you sign up you should get to this screen over here now all you need to do is click on to go to azure portal so let's click on that and you can also join in q a sessions and so on and watch demos and that sort of thing over here but go to azure portal and now we'll go into our portal which is like our dashboard for all of our azure kind of work or anything that we're working with so now we should see this screen over here now we have this kind of get started with azure section where we recommend you do this in your own time so all you need to do is click this here to pin it because we want to save that and then essentially pin this to our dashboard keep it private and we also need to create a dashboard so what we can do is create a new dashboard and then i'm just going to name this imran codes like this and then that's our dashboard and then if we do create and pin so basically this get started section will show you how to do most of the things on here but what we can do is i'll do a video just to do this section over here so we'll do that on another video so let me just close this down and now you can see we have a dashboard with all of our items in here so what we want to do is if we go back in our blog of our deployments and scroll all the way to the top you can see here the first strategy which is the recreate deployment strategy and what we want to do is use this in our microsoft azure dashboard and essentially we will do that next right so now we're on the dashboard let's go on to our blog over here and this is the one we want to have which is the recreate deployment strategy so and um, before we do that we need some required tools so first of all we need the azure cli so essentially when we're working with a project on our vs code we want to then be able to deploy using the terminal instead of going into the dashboard over here and doing deployments you can see here as well deploy a custom whatever you need to deploy so you can see here deploy a custom 
template, but we are doing everything in our VS Code. And then we also need kubectl, which is a command line interface for being able to run commands on Kubernetes clusters. So if you want to know further on that, what I'll do is I'll do a video on what Kubernetes is. And also the CLI is the command line interface for managing Azure resources efficiently. So that's what we will be needing on our machines. I've already installed Azure CLI, but if you click here you, and then you just install it with Homebrew. If you don't have Homebrew, all you need to do is click this Homebrew package manager. So if we open that up and all you need to do is copy this and then paste it into your terminal but again i've already got that installed so if we go back let's close homebrew off and then if you scroll down you don't want this you want to click back and then if you go and click on the install on mac section again and then you just basically run this command which is brew update and brew install azure cli so then you should be able to log in to your azure cli in your vs code terminal and then again we need to install kubectl this is so that we can apply and create the deployment so that's what we also need so i'll quickly go into kubectl and it's a command line tool similar to azure How to install it so and all you need to do is in the search this site just to install and press enter and then this will show you how to install the tool so let's click on this one and install kubectl on your relevant machine so for me it's mac and all i want to do is install with homebrew because that's what we have downloaded and it's quite simple all you would do is basically do bruce install kubectl so let's go ahead and paste that in and run it so once you have homebrew it installs both the Azure CLI and also kubectl, which is the Kubernetes CLI. And now that's installed, we are ready to go. Let's go ahead and open a project. So let's first of all, go into our YouTube folder. So CD into YouTube. And I want to choose a project that I have done that we want to be able to deploy. So let's do a simple one. So let's do the multi-brand YT. So multi-brand-yt. And this basically is the multi-brand website that I created and deployed using Versal. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new application and then we're going to deploy that to Next.js. So what we'll do is we'll just create a simple V app and then we'll deploy that onto Microsoft Azure. So let me do control R and then I'm going to create a V app. So let me do NPM create V latest. And this is going to be the deployment app. This is the name that I'm going to call it. And then I'm going to use a template. So dash dash template and the template I'm going to use is react dash TS. So if I press enter on that, we just follow the steps. So actually what we need to do, and let me just quickly zoom in is you can see here it's required node 18, but I'm on node 14. So let me just log out of this and do node dash V and we want to do NVM use uh, node version 20 because we should be using the latest one anyway. And then essentially run this again we want to use react with typescript and then that is now scaffolded all we need to do is follow the steps so cd deployment dash app and then we do code space dot so this will open a vs code terminal up for us and let me just bring this in so this is the project that we have scaffolded together so using v and i don't want to make any changes so this is what it should be like but let me actually open a new terminal and we want to do first of all npm install to install all of the dependencies and before we do that actually let's check the node version once again uh so let's do npm use node 20 and then just run npm install or npm i this will install everything for us and then that essentially is the boilerplate that we have and this is the repo that we want to use to deploy our sites on so so now we've done that what i want to do is just quickly clear this and if you remember we installed the azure cli so what we now want to do is log into our azure cli or our azure interface so let me close this down and here we have our microsoft azure account this is what we want to log into so all you need to do in our terminal is do az space login and press enter and it says the command is not found so let's double check why that is so let's try install that again so it was the with homebrew we want to do it with so let me do open the tab again and let's copy this command and paste it in here and we've got an error so let me just quickly do brew tap to repair and this will repair everything for us and then all i want to do now is do brew update and brew install azure cli 
and now this is ensuring that we install our Azure CLI. So if you have, if you have already installed it, that's fine and it's working for you. But if it's not, then just do what I'm doing here now. So essentially, it's going to install everything for us again in our VS Code. And if we go in extensions, actually, let's search for Azure in here to see if they have extensions. And you can see we have the all of these Azure extensions that we can use. So databases, storage, and so on. But this one here is basically get web site hosting sql and mongodb data docker containers and so on so what i'm going to do is it says here it's got 1.3 million downloads so let me just install that as well because why not and then what else do we have cli tools so this is a good one actually we need so let me install that as well azure cli tools so you can see here it basically tells you create a web app and so on and what this does is so this creates a scrapbook for developing and running commands with Azure CLI. So that's quite handy. You can save all these commands in here and there's quite frequent updates as well. So now let's just wait for this all to install and we will be right back. Right. So now that's installed, let's go ahead and log in to Azure. So let me just close this down a little bit and clear the terminal. So now we would do AZ login and press enter. We should be logging into our Azure account. So let's just wait for this to work. So now it's opened our browser and we can click on the Azure account. And now it says you're logged in. So let's close this off. And if we go into here, you can see our web browser is open. So we've confirmed everything. And then we can see our Azure subscription in here with our subscription ID, which I will then delete and select a subscription tenant type and number or enter for no changes. So let's just press enter. So now essentially what we've done is we've logged in now. So right. So now that we've logged in, what we want to do is create a resource group in our Azure CLI. So first of all, let's do a command that checks the VM. So the VM that we want to have, which stands for virtual machine is the standard DS V2, which is like the free one. So let me paste in this command, which lists what regions that we can create our resource group in so if we run this command which is up here and now you can see this is the table that was generated so if we scroll down the one i want to choose is uk south this one over here so let's do a command now so let me just clear everything out and then what we need to do is paste this in which is the group that we want to create and it was UK South and then also I want to create the name for my resource group which is going to be named Imran's V app like this I'll press enter and now you can see our resource group has been created so let's just verify that has worked so let me go in here and refresh our Azure dashboard and then if we click into here which is resource group but if you don't see that then just search it in here and it should come up so let me go into here you can see Imran's V app which is in UK South that's fine so now that we've created our resource group we need to now create our AKS which is the Kubernetes service and if we go into our dashboard and I'll show you how it is on our dashboard here so this is our resource group and then we can click create resources and then this will take us to the marketplace. So this is where we can install or add all of our services and this is where they are all available. So in here, all I want to do is search for AKS. And if we click on Azure Kubernetes service, you can now see this is the list that we have. So what we need is the Azure Kubernetes service, which is a managed cluster with a Kubernetes orchestrator for container deployments. So that's what we need. So what we want to do is add that in the cli so in our terminal over here so the command we need i'll just bring it in so let me just quickly bring that in and there's a few configurations we need to make with this so the size of the vm that we need is the standard b2s the node count is one and then we need our aks cluster name so i'm just going to call this imran's cluster like that and then there's also the resource group name that we need to update as well so in our case it's the resource group we created which is above which is the Imran's Vite app like that and that should be fine so let's press enter and then this will basically create our AKS cluster so now you can see it's running and what will happen is it will create the cluster and once that's done i will be right back right so now that has created our aks cluster let's just go into our azure dashboard and just double check that's created so 
let's go in here and in our home so in our resource group should i say we can see here now if we go into the imran the v app we now have the cluster that we created called imran's cluster so this is the kubernetes service that we have over here so now what we want to do is you can see as well there's some other default resource groups that we have but this is the one we're interested in so msci uk south imran's cluster which is a data collection rule so let's go ahead and check that out as well essentially this is in the resource group we have in uk south and this is some more information on why it is and you can also see in json view but we'll just leave that for now what we want to do click into imran's cluster and you can see what is going on in here we have all of these node pools in here so we only have one because we're using the free tier and then we also have the version and also the other information for our aks cluster we also have the cider range of the pod and the service which is basically the range that we have within the ip so this is the slash 16 side of the range in here and we also have our service ip for our dns so this is all of the information that we need the main thing is the status is succeeded and it is running so that's fine so now what we want to do is the next step of our aks which is to get the credentials for our aks in our terminal so let's go ahead and do that so let's first of all check the name of this cluster so that is the imran's cluster and that's what we need to have to hand so let me just clear this out and paste in the command so the cluster name is the one i've just read out which is imran's cluster and then also the resource group is imran's v app if you remember that so imran's v app like this so now if we press enter so we are getting our credentials so it says he emerged imran's cluster as current context so we've done that so we've got the credentials and now what we want to do is basically create a new file in our code so in here what i'm going to do is create a file so this is going to be called deployment.yaml.yaml and this is the yaml file that basically will deploy our code to kubernetes so let me just bring in our yaml file so let me just copy this and paste it actually not in there i don't want it in there and paste it in here like so and let me save that and also delete everything in our terminal so now this is our yaml file let's just hover over the errors so it's saying here missing property selector so all we can do is just do quick fix and use copilot just to fix this so if we scroll down it basically adds the selector so let's accept that and then this one again we could fix it with copilot just so we're not focusing on this too much and focusing more on the deployment side of things so again now we can see we've got our yaml file in here this file is for deployment the metadata is imran's v app deployment the spec and the selectors information is in here then we have the container name which is imran's v app container and then we also have the image which is imran's v app image of the latest so let me just save everything in here now this is where kubectl comes in and this is where we need to deploy or apply for the deployment so let me just paste in the command here which is kubectl apply dash f deployment dot yaml so let's now press enter on that and now it says here deployments are created over here and there's one more command we need to do this is to basically do the recreate deployment so let me just copy this and paste it in so it's kubectl rollout restart deployment slash example deployment or in our case what we should do is deployment slash and then the deployment name so in our case what do we call this imran's v app deployment so let me just add that in here like that and press enter so now it says deployments app restarted so now that's deployed let's go into our dashboard and let's go into our cluster and then if we go onto the kubernetes resources over here you can see this list over here and in workload let's click on that and then you can see here this is what we have this is the imran's v app deployment so you can see it's clicked through here so now you can see here in this deployment strategy the strategy is the rolling update strategy so that's what we are doing which was basically rollout restart and then the deployment itself so that is how you would do it so now what you can do is you've you got the overview here let's click refresh 
and it's still pending. So if we go into events, you can see the events of what's happening over here. You can see the YAML file over here of what's going on. So essentially that is how you would recreate a deployment. As you can see here now, the deployment has restarted. In our case, we are doing the rollout deployment. So that's how you would do that. So if I go into the cluster, so that's where our deployments are managed in the Kubernetes resource in here, in workloads, you should see this name, which is Imran's V app deployment. So you can see here Imran's V app deployments. If you click through, you have the overview of the deployment over here. So it says rolling update strategy, 25% max, and then 25% max surge. So basically this is a rolling update. All of this information is here, it's pending. I'm not going to actually deploy, but essentially this is how it will work. And then that essentially is how you would recreate your deployment. So again, it says here in the implementation, kubectl rollout restart deployment and then the deployment name. So that's how you would do that. Essentially, it's the same for the rolling update strategy, but basically you could amend your YAML file where you would kind of give the strategy type as a rolling update. So it's kind of the same strategy where you would implement and then just change the YAML file to update that. So we've covered two there, which is the rolling deployment or the rolling update deployment strategy and also recreate deployment strategy. So this is essentially recreating the last deployment. So that's how you would do that. What we're going to be doing next is looking at how to do the blue green deployment strategy and that is coming up. So previously we did the recreate strategy, which is this one over here. So recreating the rollout deployment, which is basically this one over here. So we've covered two. So now what we want to do is cover the third one, which is the blue green deployment strategy. So essentially get a recap with the blue green deployment involves two identical production environments. The current version, which is blue, whilst it is live and the other one is green, we can basically deploy and test this at the same time. So once verified, the traffic is then switched from blue to green. So let's go ahead and implement that now. So in our code, let me just quickly clear this out. Then this is going to be renamed. So let's rename this. So essentially, this is going to be recreate file responsible for this functionality over here so that's fine but now what we want to do is create two yaml files so one for blue and one for green let's go ahead and create that so this is going to be blue dash deployment paste in my code so now all i want to do is basically copy this in again but this time we want to rename this so it's going to be the green deployment.yaml and then in this green deployment.yaml, everywhere is blue, it's going to be now be green. So that's handy. And then all we need to do now is basically apply both deployments. So essentially paste in get apply blue and green as well. Let's apply them. So now they are created. So now we need to create a service route to traffic. So let's do that, which is another YAML file. So again, Let's go in here and create a new file. And this is going to be called service YAML. So this will make the switch happen. So let's paste this in. And this is going to be called the blue green. The protocol P, which again is a protocol if you hover over it and you're unsure what that is, is the TCP protocol that we need. Now, all I need to do is apply this. So cube ctl and then the yaml file we've created so that is service dash and then let's just apply that one as well so now all you need to do is switch traffic to green so update the service so basically let me just bring in my command so it's kubectl patch service example service piece of the selector and then obviously the service is basically this service, not the example service. So let me just in here name it is blue green. So blue service, and then we want the selector and we want the version of green. So all we need to do now is press enter service blue green service patched. So essentially that has now switched the deployments across from blue to green. So let's just check in our dashboard what's going on. So into our here and in home we want to find our cluster so resource groups in here we want to go in imran's v app and then we found our cluster so that's fine if you want information on what's going on you can see all of the 
basic information, but we want to go in workloads. We have our blue green deployment, and essentially you can go into each one. So I'm just going to go in green, and you can see uh, this is pending. So again, this is switching now, but we have two deployments happening at the same time. It is a chain of events will happen, so your pipeline will should run. It should build a Docker image of your application, and then once all that's successful, then this will deploy. So this is just showing you up until we press the command of deploy. After that, we need a pipeline to run everything and make sure everything works correctly. So that's why this is showing as pending. What have done is we've retargeted from the blue YAML file to the green YAML file with that command we just did. Right, so the next deployment strategy is the Canary deployment. So this involves releasing a new version to a small subset of users before rolling it out to the entire user base. So again, we can find issues early by segmenting the users to a small number and then we can test it on them. So let's go ahead and apply that in our deployment strategy. So first of all, let me just quickly go back into my cluster. Let me just quickly delete these two as well. And let's delete that. So these are deleting the deployments. And now let's go in our browser in, in our VS code and let's clear this out. So as you can imagine, we probably do need a YAML file again. So this time we will have the Canary base YAML file. So let's create a new file. And this is going to be called canary-base.yaml like this or canary based deployment actually. And these will be available in the repository anyway. So let me just paste this in. Again, instead of example, it's going to be named canary. So let me just do canary, add in the missing properties. And actually I'll just rename this to just base deployment. So that's our base deployment. And then we want our canary deployment. So let me create a new YAML file, canary-deployment.yaml. And let me just bring in the code for this one. So again, this is the canary app deployment. So canary app deployment container. And again, let's just bring in the resource, just limiting and keeping costs down. So paste that in. So now with kubectl, we just need to apply the deployment. So let me paste that in. And then all we need to do next is add a service route again to route the traffic. So we already have that. So what we can do is pretty much reuse that. So let me just reuse that command. So kubectl apply service route.yaml. So we can use that one again. So now you can see it says blue green service configured. That's not what we want. So what we'll do actually is create the new service route for the canary deployment. So let me just do in the top level, it's going to be the name is service.yaml or canary service.yaml dot yaml like this paste this in and then this time it's the canary service so let me save that and then basically it's going to be kubectl apply and this time we are applying the service canary dot yaml like that and press enter and now you can see it says the service is created so now that that's done we need to use something to create traffic splitting so the way you would do that is use istio so let me just go in the browser and what we need to do is install istio so istio here if we go into it we need to install this in our machine so what is istio basically it extends kubernetes to establish a programmable application aware network working with both kubernetes traditional workloads Istio brings standard universal traffic management. So that's what it essentially does. And these are some of the providers and you can see here Azure is one of them. So now if we go in our documentation, you can see on overview and then you can see what is Istio and so on. But if you want to install it, this is all you would do. So you can install in certain ways in here. So let's see which way is the best. You can install with Istio CTL. So that's probably what the best one we need to use. So all we do is we need the CLI, so quick start instructions or guide uses command line tool. So let's use that. So that's what Istio is. So let's go back in here in our deployment. We now need to create a new YAML file once again. This one is to do this traffic splitting. So essentially, let's create the file, which is going to be called istio.yaml like that. And then all we need to do is paste in what's going to happen. So we're using the latest API version. This is a virtual service and the service is going to be named as traffic splitting service like that. So now let's save that. So now you can see here, it says we want to have 
the base so basically the base subset as 90 percent and then the canary service as 10 percent so essentially 10 percent of our audience is going to see the canary deployment over here and then all you would do is basically paste in the command kubectl apply and then the yaml file that we have so that is basically the istio yaml file that we have so let's press enter and, and that shows an error so essentially i should rename this actually to traffic splitting service yaml instead right so now that you've created this yaml file what you also need to do is install istio do the relevant configurations and then from there you essentially would apply what we've been doing before so kubectl apply dash f and then this yaml file over here this will then do the configurations for you and make your relevant deployment so splitting it from 90 to 10 the point being that this is one of the deployment strategies that you could have but in my opinion i would generally prefer a feature flag which is something i will do in the next video but essentially that's what will happen and if i just did a quick command of get the deployments you can see here now we have our base deployment and the canary deployment in here so again you can see there's a bit of a split there we have three ready in the base and one for the canary again most of this stuff will be done in your cloud devops team and they will have this all in place anyway but this is just to show you that this is a deployment strategy so all we need to do now is if we go back in our understanding of deployment that is the canary deployment strategy covered as you can see here this is definitely complex because we need to install something else to do the traffic routing configure the dns and so on so again you want to think about these things when you when it comes to creating a deployment strategy or using a certain deployment strategy again a b testing and i'll show you how to implement feature flags and how you would do the routing and turn feature flags on and off based on a toggle or whatever it is that you're using an external feature flag provider and so on so that's what we will do in another video and then the final one is a shadow deployment strategy which is it routes live traffic to the new version without affecting the response of the user so again similar to what we have already covered in the other previous deployment strategies where we would have this sort of routing in here is very similar to what we've just covered in terms of the canary deployment strategy but again this is using istio again so we would have this yaml file and again we would then reroute traffic to the new deployment so that is how you would do it and just a conclusion is you can see here in my blog that i did is choosing the right deployment strategy depends on various factors so you need to think about what resources you have available if you have the right people to be able to configure all of this extra workload if you wanted to you know add this istio in for example which is quite complex and also making sure that people can manage all of the resources in the azure environment so as you can see here this has we created a resource group in here in this resource group we created the cluster and then in this cluster is where all of our deployments are so again you need to think about the pros and cons such as cost time how it will affect the users and so on but what essentially this video was to show you was that there are many deployment strategies and how you can implement them on something like a cloud provider like Microsoft Azure if you have been following along what we want to do now is delete all of our resource because again you want to not get charged for this so let's go ahead and do that so if we go in our cluster let's delete this cluster because we don't need it anymore so that is another thing we need to delete so as you can see here it says delete manage your clusters and so on and then if you go in home you also have all of our resource groups that were created so let's select all of them and i believe you can't delete them this way so what you need to do is go into the individual one delete the resource group in here this will also delete all any vms any databases anything like that that was created as well and what we also want to do is go into the other ones so this one is deleting and you can see this one is deleting as well so each time you go into one you can see it's deleting the v app we can go in and we need to delete this as well so let's go ahead and delete this so you just copy this and paste in and delete and then the network watcher as well essentially this needs deleting as well so all in all we need to delete everything that we've created and then essentially monitor our costs so the way you would do that is in our search bar at the top you would search for subscriptions in here so let's go into here and we have our script subscription and 
you can see all of the resources that we are using so if we click view resources in here you can see these are the clusters and so on that we are using so let me just open this cluster up and it says deleting running so we can essentially wait for this to delete so let's click back again in our subscriptions and we can delete this cluster as well so this is a cluster that we need to delete so confirm delete yes and now we just press delete this will delete our cluster and let's just double check by refreshing that this cluster is still deleting which it is doing so we can just keep that there and all we need to do now is go in our subscriptions one more time so it says here deleted resource group there let's go into our name and you can see that was also deleted so now you want to keep an eye out on this as well so spending rate and forecast you can basically keep an eye out for that and again you can see here it says subscription let's cancel this subscription if you wanted to or you could just leave it as it is and make sure everything all the resources are deleted so now what i want to do is quickly view resources and now you can see all of my resources have gone back to zero so that is fine what i would also suggest once this is zero and zero if you still want to keep your free plan and so on just make sure you double check this because we don't want to miss anything or you don't want to make sure that there's you know any unexpected errors or in terms of the payments and so on so we could also manage our billing so if we go into billing and you can see in here billing invoices if there were any invoices you could break down what there was but in cost management you could do budgets so in budget what we want to do is create a budget so you do not have any budgets let's add one and this is going to be Imran's budget for the creation day of July up until June 2026 so let's just do Imran's budget like this and reset period is every month so basically my budget for every month is going to be five or maybe let's just do one and then do next and then the type is going to be the actual and the percentage of the budget is going to be 100 and the action is going to be none so let me just do manage action group so this is how you would manage an action group so let's create one and at the minute we don't have a resource group so that's fine action group name is my limit i'm just going to call it that and then this name is going to be my limit as well so let's do that and then go on next in the notifications the type so you can email azure you can send an email slash sms and the name and so on you can fill all of this information in if you wanted to get a notification actions and so on so that's what you can do or you could just click review and create it says please correct following actions so it tells you what you've missed and then again because we don't have a resource group we can also delete this information uh, and we actually don't need a alert for this because we don't have a resource group so that's fine so let's go into my budgets again so make sure you cover that one off and then also cost alert if something is going to cost a certain amount then you can create an alert for that as well but cost management is important make sure you check that and also make sure you check in the subscriptions which if you cannot find where that is in these sidebars over here it's also helpful in your recent services over here where you can see in the subscription over here that essentially this is our limit so you still have the free services that you can play with and create your own virtual machines databases and so on and other than that let's just quickly finally check our resources there shouldn't be anything in here this is empty which is fine so now that is all complete anyways i would encourage you to read this or bookmark it or even go to my website and save this url this is essentially understanding deployment strategies the pros cons and the implementation the implementation isn't perfect you need to have in your repo a docker image that gets built you need a pipeline you need a, a url to host everything on you need many things so this wasn't the perfect scenario for this but it, hopefully you learned how to build and implement your certain deployment strategies if you want to revisit this you can see here these are the main key points that we covered in this video also i will create a blog post on the steps we took to implement the practices in our Azure code base. So in here, these are all of the YAML files in here. So the repository will become available as well. But essentially, this is a work in progress for you guys. Hopefully you learned in this video all of the deployment strategies and you can now contribute in your work projects or whatever project you're working on, on how to implement these as well. Again, these are just a base 
uh, understanding of the pros, cons and the implementation, mainly emphasizing on the pros and cons and helping you understand the deployment strategies. So hopefully this helps. Please like and subscribe because then that way I can do more videos and then that way I can help you guys learn more. And if you have any requests or any feedback, then also put that in the comments. Again, this is just a beginning starter for you guys in terms of helping you understand how to think and how to become a senior developer in terms of thinking things outside of the box so that it contributes to the business, contributes to the team. You're thinking more like a senior then and also getting you thinking about cost and time and other things like that. So again, like and subscribe and then I will see you in the next video.